I've been a fan. I've been a fan of totem acoustics since the late 1980s. It was, you know, yet another small stand mount speaker, two-way, look sort of average, nicely finished, but but the sound, the sound was different. It just connected the dots better. It had more get up and go. It it, it made me feel something I wasn't getting from other small stand mount speakers. And now today, <laughs> embarking on this review of the Totem Skylight small stand mount speaker, probably about the same size as the original, it was uh, deja vu all over again. It had that thing <laughs> that I hear from Totem speakers. Um, so that's what we're doing today, the Totem Skylight. Now, <laughs> well, Totem made very few speakers for a long time, few models of speakers, but now they make, you know, towers and stand mounts and center channel speakers and subwoofers and even passive uh, soundbar speakers. In other words, soundbar speakers that are not active. It's kind of special. Uh, meaning you use your own electronics, not the electronics that are jammed inside the soundbar. But that's another story. I'm here to talk about the skylight. Before we get into the, the nuts and bolts of the review, I just want to talk about some pertinent details of the design. Now, while most small stand mount speakers really sound their best when they're, you know, a few feet out into the room, this one you can put much closer to the wall and it still sounds really good. I had it as close as six inches to the wall behind it eventually settling on about 15 inches away from the wall. And that was a, that was a happy place for it to be. Uh, Vince Barisi, the designer, says, no, you can put them even three feet out into the room. But I was happy with them 15 inches away. So that's one. And also, Vince points out, and I think this is kind of interesting, is that he doesn't want the speakers to be towed in, angled in to the listening position. Uh, he wants his speakers firing straight ahead. And the reason I bring it up is because I know a lot of people that think that toad in speakers look kind of weird. They want them to be parallel to the wall behind them. So Vince comes along and says, OK, I'm going to make my speakers sound good parallel to the wall behind them. I mean, it's that kind of detail that's just so basic but so rarely uh, addressed in speaker design. So that's something. And I had a nice chat with Vince the other day, and he is, you know, he's the owner of the company, he's the designer of all the speakers, and he's very proud of his work. And, you know, of course everybody is, but when you talk to Vince, it just seems like, well, more heartfelt. He's very emotional, put it that way. He's very emotional about his speakers. They are his uh, children. He didn't, he didn't use that word, but I would, because that kind of connection he has to his speakers and he takes great pride in the fact that he's been making these speakers for over 30 years and that they're out there in the world and they're still playing music and they have been you know passed down from one generation to the next or sold or whatever but they're out there making music and he takes real satisfaction in that okay so enough preamble so the the skylight is as you can plainly see small two-way stand mount speaker. They sell for a thousand dollars a pair and they're available in satin white, which is what my review samples are, and also in black ash and also mahogany. That's also a totem thing is mahogany finishes and they do them very very well. Skylight's cabinet is made in-house and finished in-house. The drivers are proprietary to totem. In fact, the, the Skylight's uh, woofer, the 5.7 inch woofer, is the same driver that's used in the $2,500 uh, Sky Tower speaker. That's kind of cool. The, the tweeter is a soft ohm tweeter. Oh, and then the impedance. Now, this is interesting. The impedance is rated at 8 ohms and drops no lower than 7.7 .7 ohms. That's really noteworthy because so many of the speakers I've been reviewing of late, they have impedances that drop below 4 ohms. And that means that you'd have to use 
uh, those speakers with amplifiers that are happy driving four ohm loads, which is a tougher um, chore because it requires more current. But this one here, the Skylight, is much easier to drive. Now I'll put up the complete specifications right here on the screen for your uh, perusal. But that impedance spec really jumped out at me. The crossover there is mentioned. It's a first order, unusual, right there. It's also hardwired, meaning it's not a printed circuit board crossover. So let me tell you a little bit about the speaker grill. Now, I rarely mention the grills in speaker reviews because there's not that much to talk about, but this one is different enough. First of all, it's white for the white uh, finish speaker and black for the black speaker, but the thing is, uh, look at how neatly it's made. Now, usually, if you've looked at as many speaker grills as I have, you'll see that they're stapled or there's splotchy glue. Now, this is beautifully crafted. Very nice. As for the sound of the speaker, well, well, first of all, it's a small speaker, but it made substantial amounts of bass um, beyond my expectations. Uh, I was getting bass, solid bass down to the mid 40 hertz range. That's pretty darn special. So unless you're using these in a home theater context, you probably wouldn't need to add a subwoofer. Uh, now, I wouldn't say the bass was completely smooth all the way down to the mid 40 hertz range, but the fact that it did that, it did that and was very clean, no booming, no thickening, just precise, detailed, and clear bass. Very nicely done. So I, ha I have mentioned this recording before. I'll put it up on the screen. Danny Barnes. Now, he's, he's I guess, basically a country-ish folk singer. He, he somehow reminds me of Acoustic Hot Tuna or David Bromberg, but with a little more country feel. But I think he's an amazingly expressive singer. And that was really brought to the fore by the Skylight speakers. He, he just, he's, he's just so comfortable on the mic. He's so loose and sounds like he's having fun doing it. You know, I just fell in love with this recording and I just had it on repeat. I would just play this music over and over again because it just made me feel good. <laughs> and it's also a really nice recording, by the way. I didn't mention the electronics so far, did I? No, I don't think so. The electronics I used for this review was the standard setup for this kind of speaker, which is the Denon PMA 600 NE integrated amplifier used in conjunction with a shit Bifrost multi-bit DAC. So it's not expensive, less than $1,000 for those two pieces combined. Um, and that's kind of it. Now I was streaming and I was playing CDs and for a change, I also played essay CDs and DVD audio discs over the course of this review. I enjoyed these speakers at quiet late night levels, medium-ish levels, and fairly loud volume. It didn't seem to favor any one of those three choices. They just, it's just, it's a volume agnostic. Let's put it that way. So I'm looking around on Tidal and I started playing these Doors, these live uh, Doors albums. I think they're bootlegs or something, but somehow they wound up on Tidal. And wow, what an amazing band. If you never saw them live, if you're a Doors fan, if you never saw them live, and <laughs> you'd have to be pretty old to have done that, uh, Jim Morrison, especially, was so theatrical. He brought a, that kind of presence and performance to rock music that really didn't exist before, at least among white musicians, I'll put it that way. And he was just so good because when he entered the stage, uh, he just took over. He just was bigger than life. And he was a, another he, terrific singer. He could roar. He could bellow. <laughs> a lot of rock singers, they do that screaming thing, but he had a, this bigger, <laughs> bigger sense to his singing than, uh, than, than most. And, you know, they're doing some covers, uh, Crossroads. I don't remember the covers they were doing over these things. And I'll link to the main one that I play. I'll put it up on screen right now. This, the Doors uh, in uh, Detroit. I think in 69 or so. But anyway, great band. But the thing is, not great recordings, these live Doors ones. 
And you know what? Uh, this speaker wasn't didn't complain too much when I played pretty iffy sounding recording. It was all good. I was totally in the doors zone and I wasn't thinking like, ooh, this is not a great sounding recording. Nah, I didn't care. I was just digging the doors. <laughs> that's, that's all. That's all I needed to do. So I mentioned I had played some high res discs, including this one, the Beach Boys Pet Sound Mobile Fidelity Remaster. What a beautiful, beautiful recording. Just, wow. I mean, I love this music. I so do. I think I love it more now than I did when it was new 127 years ago. Just gorgeous, beautiful production. Just so lush and full and the bass. I don't know if it's Carol Kay playing bass on all these tracks. There's a lot of musicians on this record, but the bass, that kind of step bass thing, I, I don't even know what it is, but it's very, um, doesn't sound like anybody else's bass. But anyway, just the, the vocals, everything about it was just so beautiful. And I was listening with my eyes closed and just in it, in the zone and thinking, oh, wait, wait, I'm listening to a pair of smallish uh, stand mount speakers, but the sound is just so big and room filling. Beautiful. Just stunning. So another high res recording was this one. Neil Young, live at the Fillmore. Now look at that marquee. Who was opening for Neil Young? Miles Davis? Whoa. Yikes. Anyway, this is Neil at definitely uh, an early peak. Just so good. And if you, if you were ever there at the Fillmore, this recording will put you back into that space. And if you never made it to the Fillmore, because you weren't born, uh, this will tell you what that space was like because it it truly was well i think it was the best venue ever for me personally of uh, for for rock music it just everything about that place was incredible and the sound system they had at the fillmore was so much better than anything around that time period and the vibe was terrific so anyway neil young crunchy cinnamon girl that kind of stuff wonderful and the skylight just did it, man. It just let it happen. Now, it's a very good live recording for its time period, no doubt. But this uh, set, this is a two disc set. One is the DVD audio disc and one is a CD, presumably mastered at the same time. And then I popped out the DVD audio, which was 9624, and I popped in the CD and it was, like, ay, 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 <laughs> where, did all the good, where did all the good stuff go? It was gone. Just dramatically so. Now, I don't, I'm not always claiming there's big, big differences between SACDs or DVD audios and these standard CDs. But in this case, there was a big, big difference. Big difference. So, or I should put it this way, that the skylight easily highlighted what those differences were. So, okay, I got the message. So I took out the CD popped in the DVD audio disc of the Fillmore show and decided to do some speaker swapping. I pulled out the skylight, popped on the Bowers and Wilkins 607 S2 anniversary speakers. Well, they're about the same size as you can plainly see. They do not sound similar. <laughs> now the thing is, well, right away there was a difference in resolution. The skylight is definitely a clearer, more transparent, more vivid, uh, sounding speaker. There was more of the film work coming through. Uh, the thing in the 607S2's favor was that it was more relaxed sounding. It was a bit richer sounding. In the, let's say the mid bass was more fleshed out over the 607. Um, but it was less less alive, less there. There was less, less there there coming over the 607S2 anniversary. So. Both are good, and the 607S2 anniversary is $699, so it's considerably more affordable than the Skylight. Again, the Skylight is $1,000 a pair. To finish up, I wanted to change things up with the Flaming Lips, this one here, their version of none other than Dark Side of the Moon. Oh boy, this is different. Now, if you have some sort of religious connection to the Pink Floyd version, don't listen to this, because this is uh, different. 
it's trippier, it's weirder, it's crunchier, it's just got more uh, buzz, <laughs> more buzz going on. Just like they said, let's just, we don't want to make another version that sounds like everybody else. We want to do a completely different thing. And it's, again, it's not a great recording. It's definitely on the bright side of uh, acceptable. But it's so much fun to hear these songs, such, so familiar and yet so different. And again, Skylight, just let, let, me, let the magic happen again. <laughs> so yes, I was having a good time. Fun. This was a fun experience. And when that happens, well, the product's going to get a good review. And, and so this one has. The Totem Acoustics Skylight is definitely a winner. And the cherry on top is, yeah, you can put it up against a wall. You don't have to tow it in. And a matter of fact, Vince Brzezzi says, you can even put it on a chest of drawers. It's not fussy. It's not a fussy speaker, and yet still has true high-end credibility. That's really nice. Speaking of nice, <laughs> my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. If you like what I do here, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Very, very easy. Hit that button right, right down there. When you do, hit the bell so you'll be notified every time there's an amazing new episode. And then beyond that, what can I tell you? Oh, speaking of amazing, check out the Patreon at P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash audiophiliac. And then I can tell you about playlists. We got playlists. We have playlists for speaker placement, not just speaker reviews. A short, and I will try to add more to that, uh, a playlist about speaker placement. There's speaker. There's also uh, a playlist for for viewer systems, where you know you guys send in pictures, and the 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 world, the audiophile world, gets to see your stuff. And I got one coming up uh, very very soon, <laughs> or maybe it's already posted. I, I get the I shoot these things out of order. But anyway, this latest one with viewers who are under 30 years old. That's what this one is all about. And man, oh man, <laughs> there's some great stuff out there. And yes, there will be one very, very soon, very, very soon I will announce a call for pictures from audiophiles who are over 30 years old. So start snapping those pictures. Nice pictures, clear pictures. Nicely composed pictures. Yes. Anyway, I will give you the address. The address to where to send them will be in the description box below this video. And by the way, you really have to tell me what's in the picture. And please put the description in the email with <laughs> the pictures. Because a lot of guys forget. They send me the pictures without the description or the description without. Put them all together. It makes life so much easier. Speaking of easier, I think my work here is <laughs> at last complete. So thank you again for watching, and I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.